Hey guys, so today I wanted to talk about how dynamic these Blackmagic uh, 4K and the 6K cameras can be and what different types of scenarios you can use them in and feel confident uh, to use them in your next production. You don't want to use this camera as a basic vlogging camera. It's kind of like having a Ferrari and driving it. Well, not really a Ferrari, but you get where I'm going. So it's basically like having this great image quality and, and just using it as a one place to do a talking head. Now, a lot of the projects that I have, there are talking heads. Do I use a wide angle for the talking head shoots? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I, I tend to use a 50 millimeter or an 85, depending on the space that I have to use and how intimate I want that specific shoot. But today I'm using the 16 millimeter uh, Miyake lens and that is on the Blackmagic 4K. Um, and it's still giving me that wide angle view. I'm using it today just to demonstrate that you can use this for a talking head setup or a vlog setup if you want to use your camera for multi-purpose because yes, you'll use these cameras for shoots. You want to have this, this dynamic range, better image quality. What do you do then? So you're in that situation and, you, and I wanted to talk about how you can make this camera work uh, for you. Now, again, the price of this camera is really, really great for, for what it is. So you're getting a, a superb image quality out of these cameras, the 4K and the 6K. So far, I'm still utterly impressed with them. Again, continuing to shoot with them just surprises me every day, uh, all the little things that I'm finding out as I go. Um, so right now I'm shooting it um, on the camera itself. Uh, I'm not shooting raw specifically for this. It's just the studio is not going to be that much grading happening here. Uh, I'm also using the Atomos Ninja Assassin recorder as my backup. So I'm going to use those two files and cut through back and forth. That's coming in right now at a, a 1920 by 1080, but the camera itself is shooting 4K. But it's nice to kind of see what the differences are as I shoot. So as I spoke before about it, it doesn't have a backup relay for the drive. So, you know, right now I'm basically counting on the T5, Samsung T5 drive to record this. And then I'm using my Atomos Ninja recorder as a backup. Um, so. Just want to see how that workflow uh, is and share that with you and just go through that process. So let's talk about the details. Now what happens about, what, what can you do when you're focusing and not focusing and how do you do that when the camera's far away from you? There is no autofocus. So what's funny is the Moza Air came with a follow focus system. Now this is, uh, this is actually the controller and the follow focus is on the camera right now. So I can technically focus in and out with this on the camera and I can show you details of that um, in a second. But this helps me kind of just do my, you know, go through all my, my setups, focus, make sure everything's great without have to, having to physically go in, you know, grab the lens and mess around to get me in focus. Um, so this is, this has kind of been like kind of a nice little treat to have that because I wasn't really using it on the Moza Air, but now that I have the Black Magic, I'll be using it more and more. What's great about this, you can kind of mount this anywhere. So even if you do a handheld situation and you want to do this while you're, you know, obviously setting it up on your rig, this has been great. And the Moza Air is such an amazing gimbal. I think it's super, super, um, you know, flexible in the way that I've used it, um, through three different camera bodies already. So really happy with it. Um, it handled the Sony's pretty well and it's handling, handling the black magic, uh, extremely well. So really happy that I didn't have to get any sort of accessories for it or anything else. I spoke in my last video about just basically moving the camera over on a cage just a little bit. So it gives it a room on the right hand side. So it doesn't uh, hit up against the gimbal. So these were really easy because you basically had continuous focus, uh, face tracking and hope for the best and everything usually turned out fine. And that was great. But even with my a7s II, I usually left it on manual when I was doing a, a talking head interview or, you know, I was filming myself on a vlog because I don't tend to go back and forth, back and forth. I think the only time that you kind of worry about that is if you're looking at something and you're really pushing it forward and you want better focus there that sometimes works and sometimes doesn't so i tend to shoot straight ahead and if you're doing an interview setup 
most likely that person's going to be staying somewhat still. Um, someone asked me uh, in the comments, like, how do you deal with that? I basically, you know, what I do is I, I set up my lens at a 5.6 and hope that my talent isn't going to go too crazy all over the place. And most of the time that doesn't happen. Um, so you should be good, good there. So if you have any doubts about using these cameras for interviews, you really shouldn't. I like using a rig because it puts everything in one place. Now, the one thing that I like about the rig that I set up and I spoke about it in my last video and I'll show you some details here and how the rig is set up is that I have everything powered um, from that V-mount adapter. So that V-mount adapter basically now has no battery attached to it. Batteries off the mount itself and that all the power goes through that just through the cable. So I've got my, my Ninja Assassin coming through there. It's going into that box. I've got the Black Magic going into that. And I even have the follow focus going into the USB, which is great. So it's powering everything for me through AC. Now that's great for a studio setup. And I think, uh, you know, so far so good. I think it's a pretty, pretty good setup. Um, and this is, this is a good situation. If you're gonna go shoot somewhere where there is actual power, you can connect into it. You don't have to bring a ton of batteries with you. You're not gonna need to, to bring some sort of, you know, special adapters to make it all work. It's just literally the cables that you need to power it up going right into that box. You don't even need to bring a V-mount battery if you didn't want to, but if you wanted to get off the rails and shoot and have that flexibility, just add a, a V-mount right on the back of it and you're good to go. So I think, uh, you know, I think overall this camera can be really, really flexible. It depends what, you know, what you can get out of it or what you want to get out of it. And just to, you know, think about your setup, what you need to do. And I think you should be fine. So again, always goes back to image quality. Um, working with this camera has been such a treat and it's just so great to have that easy menu system, that amazing image. And you know, now that I got this adapter for the, uh, for the uh, 4K, which I'm not using for this specifically because I don't, need, uh, I don't need a booster for this particular situation. I'm controlling the light. Um, I don't need to blow out my background so much. So I'm, I'm kind of okay with that. But if I was not doing that, that booster has been really, really great. Well, it, it does two things. One, it lets me use these, um, you know, these EF uh, Rokinon lenses on there. Uh, it's giving me a little bit more light, which is which is great, and it's definitely knocking out some of that background, so it gets away from that micro four thirds kind of look, uh, which didn't really bother me, and this is what it is now, um, and I think it's fine. But if you're you really want to kind of match it up more to your 6K, I think that that's the best way to go. Now, again, every camera you know that you get, you're gonna have to put in additional money in it. I think if you think you're gonna get it out of the box and it's gonna be perfect. Um, you know, it doesn't always turn out that way. So again, I'm happy that I got to use a lot or reuse a lot of the things that I was using before with my uh, Sony cameras, as far as the kit goes and the, the rig and the cage and all that stuff. Um, the only things honestly I had to change was the cage and get some cables to go along with it. The rest has been the same. And what's good about investing in this type of gear is you can switch it out. So whether the cage changes, the rig itself doesn't have to change. It's gonna mount on something. So I'm happy I invested in that and I've had a lot of gear for, for many years. Uh, so I didn't have to reinvest. So I'm really happy about that. Well, I hope this video was helpful. Um, if you're planning on shooting with your 6K or your 4K, just an easy way to set this up, A for talking heads, B for maybe shooting your vlogs. If you're deciding to letting go of that camera and then saying, what am I gonna shoot with? Is this gonna be problematic? Well, I say it's not gonna be problematic. I think it's gonna be great. Um, and this camera is great. It's a great investment. And again, for the price point, you're getting an image from a camera that's much, much more expensive. So uh, if you have any questions, um, just you know, hit the comments there and leave a comment for me. I'll, I'll gladly answer it. Thanks again for watching, guys. Please follow, like, and subscribe. Oh, and hit that bell button in case I make some new videos. All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon.